Hey guys, we're going to talk revolvers today. We're going to talk revolvers in general, and then we're going to talk about these specific revolvers, and then I'll probably end up doing another video on a bunch of different holster options and on ammo choices for both 2 inch and 3 inch 38s and 357 magnums. So here we go. I've only filmed one other video. Uh, in this style that I just did, it's actually on Thanksgiving, changed my shirt to be a little more, you know, appropriate for a revolver video on the top five carry calibers and try and explain that, especially to like new people, uh, options that are out there. So check out that video. It seemed to work out fairly well. Hopefully the lighting is okay and I can kind of go back and forth to give you a little bit more close up look and we'll be doing that with the Colt Detective Special. This is actually the same size six shot snub in uh, which, which a Taurus 856 fits in. Obviously, maybe not as nice as this nice old Colt Detective. We got a Smith & Wesson uh, Model 12 aluminum frame, lightweight K frame, pretty rare. Uh, we have the new Rossi RP63 357 Magnum, three inch barrel, six shots. Uh, kind of everything, and it's budget price now. Down to three thirty to three fifty. It wasn't that when I got one of the very first ones. Uh, and quality wise, it is not that. We got the Taurus eight five six multi caliber. My most popular video, I think, with like three hundred seventy thousand views. My unboxing of this. Look at my range review. All that because it's multi caliber. Three fifty seven thirty eight, and swap it out really easy for a nine millimeter cylinder, seven shot, three inch. My first ever revolver, this Taurus Special Edition uh, Ruger GP100, 7 shot, Taylor Edition, 3 inch. Uh, 3 inch are awesome in revolvers, by the way. Uh, started it all when I said is a 7 shot, 3 inch, 357 Magnum, a viable CCW option. So bear with me as we do our little cheap production value I'm giving you guys. Uh, I got some of my videos on YouTube. I've done a lot of revolver stuff. It seems my most popular stuff. So the question is, these old antiquated uh, machines for a more civilized time back in the day, why would you want some? Why would you carry them? And then let's go into these specific ones. Um, and then I'll probably do another video on the, the holsters and another video on ammo choices for these, specifically for these two and three inch barreled carry revolvers. So I think there's a lot of reasons. I was always a pistol guy. My grandfather taught me to shoot when I was young. His collection was all auto pistols. And um, so I really never shot. Probably till I was like 14, 15, I started renting them occasionally. I remember renting a Ruger SP-101 a few times and stuff like that. But I've never, never seriously uh, was at all a revolver shooter until I got this amazing bad boy. Yeah, you're asking what the grips are. Ultimate grips on these, both of them. And uh, what I found was it makes you a better shooter. Not only are they cool... But the probably number one reason is it makes you a better shooter. Maybe it's more fun to you. If you have a, a large pistol collection, maybe doing a revolver training day, as I call them, helps kind of break up the monotony, helps make you really work on the, the fundamentals of the trigger press. These are all empty, triple checked. Um, so this is just dry fire practice on camera. Instead of using the tip like you might get away with on a 1911 or a striker fired, I switched over from using... Like kind of halfway on the tip to the the middle digit. I forget. I don't say you know, what he just called it. Uh, but that gives you the most leverage. And it gets you learning how to, even with pistols, I shoot everything the same way. No, you don't do a thumbs forward grip on a revolver. Because this thumb, especially with Magnum cartridges. Ka bluey. Look at the Paul Hero video. Uh, blowing up some hot dogs with that, right? Uh, but you cross over is usually... Other people do this and all that, but that's a bad training ha habit for auto pistols. This is really kind of the best uh, revolver grip, in my opinion. And pulling through that long, heavy, double-action trigger pull. And boy, it looks intimidating and bad, guys, if it was loaded with some big old hollow points, some jacket hollow points, something like that. Uh, but it makes you a better shooter. So, in full disclosure, I almost never carry a revolver, other than when I'm going back and forth 
to revolve the training days. Full disclosure, because uh, of all the incidences I've had, only one of my kind of defensive display, defensive gun use displays, uh, was actually with this. Five carjackers screeching to a halt about a jump out as I threw open my vest. True story. Put it and gave them my Clint Eastwood eyes on the way back from a revolver training day from the range. Um, so capacity is always kind of that issue, right? That's uh, the elephant in the room. Well, I prefer a six-shot snub to a five-shot. I prefer a six-shot 357 three-inch for much better ballistics, 357 Magnum to a five shot. SP100 is a tank. I'd love to own a three inch. They look really beautiful in three inch barrels. But uh, for carry, I at least want two per bad guy. Auto is kind of better to at least have three versus three bad guys to drive them off in that four to seven seconds of a hellish typical uh, defensive gun use. Um, but. Uh, that's six shots, so I kind of, and these are seven shots instead of six shots on the full sizes. So that's kind of something I like. Um, but you could always carry two snubbies. Jim Cirillo style, Pistol Pete, who was Revolver Pete, Chicago PD. Uh, Jim Cirillo, obviously his, his book is amazing. Uh, Tales of the Stakeout Squad, I got a copy over there, signed by the author. Um, or you could do it. Both on the hips, real cowboy style, especially with like a leather vest I got or a denim vest. Pretty cool, right? Um, you could totally do that. So having a New York reload or, you know, go crazy, get a New York reload and get a New Jersey reload. Uh, probably the best way would really be to have something, you know, like this and not that heavy, right? Having this either appendix or three o'clock outside waistband, in my opinion, and something the size of like this, an 8.56, maybe an all Sierra 9 millimeter. That's only five shots, but better ballistics. Uh, I'd like to get one of those and cheaper training. In the offside front pocket, look at my nine reasons for civilian to carry a backup gun. Ask for buttle, nine reasons to carry a backup gun for that. So you would do that kind of thing. Um, above and beyond that, they're just cool. And if you're comfortable carrying it, it's three to five shots going to solve most situations yeah most situations certainly if we look at tom Givens instructors a lot of them were in the eight uh, so some of them were in the eight ten twelve shots needed range and those are really accurate turned on guys with more awareness than most people and the higher hit ratio so just something to think about so let's talk specifically this obviously you see i have a pension for three inch um, revolvers and most people do Number one, three inch over two, it's not splitting the difference between three and four. A three inch ballistics with like a hot 125 grain seven jacket at all point or a hot 38 plus P, way better, the bigger jump from the two to three inch or especially one and seven eighths little J frames, like big, 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 big jump. Um, and so it's almost to four inch uh, power that law enforcement used uh, forever. Longer sight radius, you got, uh, let's grab one of these, a full length ejector rod, okay, boom, smack that bad boy, and eject your rounds, and that gives you a full length, where two and a half inch usually does not, um, and even some three inch for that matter, but usually a three inch has a full length ejector rod, that's why I like them. Obviously, there's all kinds of great revolvers out there, they're cool, they look awesome, and they're amazing, so... Let's get into more of talking about these specific ones. Uh, we'll start at the smallest, right? They're kind of going in size. This one's actually taller, top to bottom, this K-Frame Model 12, compared to the 357. This is a very small, lightweight, easy to conceal 357 at shy 28 ounces. So you're like at 27 ounces, loaded, you're under 30, and uh, it makes a good carry option if you're in a low threat environment okay if you're not in a big big city with lots of gangs if you're you know more likely it's just a mugging by one guy rather than three or five gang bangers uh trying to get you trying to carjack you like was my situation when i happened to be carrying this so let's start with the cold detective again this is actually the same exact size i'll do a holster video both this and the a56 fit in uh a tolster 
uh, appendix, Kydex holster, they both fit. They're like the same exact size, basically same exact weight, both six shot snubbies with real two inch barrels, not one and seven eighths. And when you get down that much, having a little more for the uh, powder to burn and get a little higher velocity, it, it does matter uh, sometimes with all the other variables involved. And here's a Model 12, which Smith & Wesson should make again. It's got a K-Grip adapter, uh, which was recommended to me by a super revolver aficionado. No, no, my friend Gun Sam that does the best ballistics testing on YouTube is MDF Real World Testing. Look at all my ballistic videos kind of explaining that as far as making clear ballistics actually useful information. Uh, but this was re recommended by Greg at Lion Quest Fitness, former LE, and he teaches uh, high school students, law enforcement, and uh, firefighting stuff, so, you know, they can get a good career. Very light. I've seen as light as 17 ounces, as some, some people have quoted others. So, I got a full K-frame size, so it's not just the extra round, by the way, guys. So, you know, got, you got a wider notch of the rear trough of course on revolvers snubbies whatever you can always put some orange paint on the front sight if it doesn't have a push pin to swap out and then i had to kind of shim it up to put on a night sight like on my rp63 for the a56 but it it fits in there but it needed some shimming up <clears throat> but they should really make this again in either a two and a half inch or three inch barrel uh, that would probably sell really well since the E56 Defender sells really, really well. And I was going to get one until TFB TV leaked about this bad boy coming out. And I'm like, well, with 38 Special, even with a 3 inch barrel, you got to be pretty darn particular with your ammunition choices for personal defense, CCW carry. Um, but with a 357, Almost any 125 grain is going to do just fine. Um, and you can use 125, 135, 145. We'll do a most, more specific video on ammo choices. So I got that. It's only slightly bigger than A56 Defender. I know that from the Harry's Holster review I have. And I just had to kind of shim that one up and it uh, put some spacers and loosen the, the screws and that one uh, fit. So um, very nice triggers in these. Old school hammer on the trigger, so I'm not going to drive fire it too many times. That's why I put my thumb there. Same thing with the Colt Detective. Very nice trigger. This one kind of rolls. People like that. Um, people say Jim Cirilli used a Colt Detective. I actually think it was a Cobra, but of the aluminum frame version of this or an agent. Um, you can still occasionally find it, but people have kind of wisened up in there. Snagging all of those. Occasionally, you can find some beat up one of these that are still very good shooter, uh, would be good carriers um, on like gun broker and stuff. So, something to consider. Keep your eyes out. This was over $400. Now it's $330 to $350. There's even a cool Cerco version. I like it a lot. Now, long term dur durability, we don't know. It's actually marked like the old 471 because that's what it is on the frame. Uh, but now Greg at Lion Quest Fitness got one, and so far so good. He was like, yeah, it's really good quality. And other guys measured the tolerances, so it's very tight. Um, the, the jump to the bore, uh, to the forcing cone, so should get really good velocity. Um, don't know about the Taurus 692, except it's amazing because I can throw in that 9mm cylinder and uh, get some cheap training. And that's really awesome. It took a little finagling, but managed to get the um, Taurus Tracker or Judge uh, frame, because that's what it is. Uh, Ultimat Rosewood checkered grips. Ultimat's been good to me a couple times, and I appreciate that. And the GP100 with the front fiber optic. This thing is awesome. It's been smoothed over a little bit. Um, so I got different hammer strings in this one and that one. Very, very, very good. End of the world. One of these would be my choices for end of the world. More capacity. This one can do 9 millimeters, so I'd probably get the volume. This one being a tank and going through nuclear war and still being able to <laughs> function like a much better looking Glock of the Revolver World, the GP100. Uh, I wouldn't mind having a 3-inch 
686 plus. I gotta admit, I wouldn't mind one of those either. Uh, right? There's certainly other revolvers out there, but this is a good example of some carry revolvers. And, um, yeah, guys, so let me know what you think of my kind of collection here as far as carry revolvers. There might be one or two others. Look at a video I did on uh, revolvers and a couple have kind of come and gone. But these are good examples of good modern carry revolvers. This is the one to get, in my opinion, until they start breaking or something. It does have the firing pin on the hammer. Yes, they it should be drop safe nowadays. Rossi's back, Magnum Country, and all that. So, could he carry it? Yeah, if you are in a lower kind of threat area, um, yeah, I have a video on Crazy Carrier Revolver about this. That kind of explains it a bit more. And, um, you know, if you're cool with a good leather belt or a carry belt, putting something like one of these seven shot three inch, Hey, you're more than likely, more than likely okay, right? Uh, but again, I would do something more like this and then this and a backup and, and a pocket holster and a winter coat if you're up north kind of thing for easier access. Access to each hand, look at my backup gun video. Or you could go easy style, both of these fit in K-frame holsters. I'll do a holster thing. This is a little, uh, actually kind of smaller. It's not as tall from bottom of the trigger guard to there. Uh, but, boy, that would be comfortable because this is like under 28 ounces. This is like 17 ounces. Cowboy it up. Say when, man. Um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I think that's long enough. Let's go over. And, again, I think 9mm is really good. I wouldn't mind that 9mm OCR or other 9mm revolvers from a snubby great ballistics. But you probably may or may not lose a round, right, of capacity. Um, but uh, good cheaper training. And then you can always get a 22 revolver 22 long rifle for revolver for training or magnum if you wanted to so anyway guys uh let's look at the other video for holsters and on recommending carry ammo i hope you like it let me know what you think in the comments down below what do you think's the best what do you think's the best for carry do you actually carry a four inch open carry or concealed you know on the ranch or out in the woods or concealed or even bigger are you throwing on a six inch in a, in a shoulder holster I don't know, Dirty Harry's out there. Let me know what you think, and please help me out in the comments, and, you know, take care, everybody. Kaboom.